the early departure payment. What is it? Hey everyone, and welcome to The Savvy Squatty. In this video, I'm going to explain what the early departure payment, or EDP, is, and what it means for you. The scheme is only available for those in the regular armed forces and on the 05 and 15 pension schemes. EDP is a benefit unique to the armed forces and is completely separate from the pension. The scheme is there as a way to retain people in the forces until at least age 40, and it does this by having certain eligibility criteria that must be met. If you have time on both schemes, then you need to meet the criteria of both schemes to get their respective EDP payments. So, what are the eligibility criteria? For the AFPS 05, you need to have served at least 18 years as a regular from the date you joined and be 40 or over, but under 55, when you leave the forces. This is known as the 1840 EDP point. On the 15 scheme, you need to have served at least 20 years as a regular from the date you joined and be 40 or over, but under 60 when you leave the forces. This is known as the 2040 EDP point. You need to meet both the time served and age criteria to be awarded this benefit for each scheme you are on. But what will you be entitled to if you are eligible? EDP consists of a tax-free lump sum which is paid when you leave the forces and a monthly income which is paid from when you leave the forces up until your pension becomes payable. Each scheme calculates the award amounts differently. With the 05 scheme, the tax-free lump sum you receive will be three times your annual deferred pension. The monthly income, which is taxable, is no less than 50% of your annual deferred pension, which is then divided into 12 equal amounts. On the 05 scheme, the EDP income increases by 1.6667% for each year served past the 1840 EDP point. And then from age 55, the EDP income increases to 75% of your annual deferred pension. When it comes to the 15 scheme, the tax-free lump sum is 2.25 times your annual deferred pension. And the income payments are still taxable and are up to 34% of your annual deferred pension, also split up into 12 equal amounts. For each year after the 2040 EDP point, the monthly payments increase by 0.85%. And at the age of 55, instead of increasing to 75% of the annual deferred pension like the 05 scheme does, your monthly EDP income will increase in line with the consumer price index, or in other words, in line with inflation. I will go through an example a bit later on in this video which should help further illustrate this more for you. So, EDP is separate from the pension. Although the method of calculation is using your annual pension amount, claiming EDP, if you're eligible, does not affect your pension in any way. But because it is a benefit and not a pension, it will not be paid forever. Instead, it stops being paid to you once your pension is payable. On the 05 scheme, this is at the age of 65, and on the 15 scheme, it's state pension age. Please remember that you need to claim your pension six months before it is due. It is not automatically paid to you. Do not assume that because your EDP has stopped being paid that the pension will just kick in you can claim your pension from DBS Veterans UK. When it comes to claiming EDP, if you're eligible for it, then you will need to fill out a pen form one, which is part of your leaving process, so you shouldn't miss it. The payment of the lump sum and monthly payment then usually happens the month after your final pay. Now, something unique to the EDP on the 15 scheme is inverse commutation. This is where you can give up that tax-free lump sum in order to make the monthly payments higher. Bear in mind though, the 15 scheme does not offer an automatic lump sum when the pension becomes payable like the 05 and 75 schemes do. Also, by doing this, you are giving up a tax-free amount to make your monthly taxable income higher. EDP on the 05 scheme does not have this option. And if you choose to do it, then you must apply six months before it is due to be paid at the end of your service. So what happens to your EDP if you rejoin? Well, if you join the reserves, then nothing. You will not have to pay back your lump sum and the monthly payment will continue. But if you're on the 05 scheme and you rejoin the regulars again, then the monthly income will stop and you may have to pay back a portion of your lump sum. Upon leaving again in the future, then the EDP lump sum and monthly income will be recalculated to factor in this extra service. On the 15 scheme, you have one of two options. You can either keep the EDP lump sum and monthly payment and it will remain in payment during your new period of service but it will not be recalculated when you come to leave again. 
or you can repay the lump sum and stop the monthly payment and instead be entitled to a new EDP lump sum and monthly payment that has been recalculated to include this new service. If you rejoin regular service after a five year break, then the EDP will continue to be paid and there will be no recalculation of any further service you do. So now that's all covered, let's have a look at an example to help illustrate all this information. I will use the pension calculator and in this scenario, Joe has time on both the 05 and 15 schemes and leaves the forces as a W01 after 24 years of service. I've done a whole video on the pension calculator which I will link below. It's a great tool. It's also set to be updated later this year to include the McLeod Remedy. So the first thing I want to highlight is in the service details section. You can see the date Joe will become qualified for the EDP benefit, but it's showing the same date for both schemes. Why is this though if each scheme has different requirements? It's because that is the date he will turn 40. He will have served 18 years in 2031, four years prior to that eligibility date. But because he isn't 40, he isn't entitled to it yet. By the time he turns 40, then he has served over 20 years, so he is entitled to EDP from both schemes. Moving down to the important part, you can see a breakdown on how much he will get from each scheme. As he only has two years on the 05 scheme, the EDP income payment is not very high at all. As he will have 22 years on the 15 scheme, the EDP income is much higher. Also, bear in mind it's showing what he will get for the year. This needs to be divided by 12 to get the monthly amount. Earlier I said that the monthly income is calculated using the annual deferred pension amount. On the 05 scheme, we can see the annual deferred pension is £1,516. But also, Joe has served two years above the 1840 EDP point, so he gets an additional 3.3334% on top of the 50%. So, 53.3334% of £1,516 is £809. The 15 scheme EDP payment is 34% of the annual deferred pension, but with that addition of the two extra years above the 2040 EDP point, it will be 35.7% of £17,579, which is £6,276 a year. So the total monthly amount would be £590.41p. Now, if your other half works or you have other assets that are bringing you in money, then that could be you for the remainder of your years. Put your feet up and chill out. Or perhaps you either still want to or need to work. Either way, with this additional income, you now have more freedom to pick and choose what job you want to do. If we look at the EDP at 55 box, you can see that the 05 amount has increased. This is because at age 55, the EDP income is increased to 75% of the deferred pension. The 15 EDP stays the same as that increases in line with inflation, which is not a set amount and varies from year to year. Going back to the lump sum exit, we can see the total tax-free amount Joe will get when he comes to leave. Certainly nothing to be sniffed at. The EDP lump sum on the 05 scheme is three times that of the deferred pension, and the lump sum on the 15 scheme is 2.25 times that of its deferred pension. If we scroll down to the commutation section, we can see what effect giving up the 15 scheme EDP lump sum would have on Joe's EDP income. It would increase it by over £2,000 a year. His total new monthly income would be £776.58p, over 150 quid extra a month than if he didn't do it. Going back up, we can see at the deferred pension at 65 that the EDP for the 05 scheme is no more and instead has been replaced by the 05 deferred pension. This is the age the 05 scheme pension becomes payable, so the EDP for that scheme ceases to be paid. The 15 scheme, however, continues to be paid until state pension age, where the deferred pension for the 15 scheme begins to be paid. This lump sum that is shown is the pension lump sum that is payable from the 05 pension scheme. As I said earlier, the 15 scheme does not have an automatic lump sum payment at pension age. Just for comparison, the monthly income that Joe will be able to enjoy during retirement from state pension age onwards is £1,591.25p. I hope that seeing the pension calculator has helped illustrate what EDP is and what you could potentially get. Your numbers will be different, so it's important for you to have a go at the calculator yourself to see what you could be entitled to and when. It is true that the pensions have declined with each new scheme, but they are still one of the best public sector's pensions out there. We don't even contribute to our pensions, unlike almost everywhere else. 
and naturally the more time you spend in, the greater the pension will be. Just look at what Joe would get should he only do 12 years. He will not get any EDP benefits, but he will receive a resettlement grant for serving 12 years. He will get a small lump sum and a very small pension of just over £100 a month when he is 65 from his time on the 05 scheme, and a total monthly pension payment of £661.83p from state pension age onwards. A vast difference from the nearly £1,600 a month he would get if he had served a full career. I personally don't care if you stay in for a full career or not, that is your choice, but what I do care about are people making potentially life-changing decisions when they are not properly informed. But hopefully now you understand the early departure payment and what it has to offer. Will you be staying in for a full career to take advantage of this benefit? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. If you liked what you just saw, please hit the subscribe button up there. And if you want to see some more videos, click over there. See you soon.